working together in Baghdad, translated the Greek words into Arabic. And this is how cross-fertilization of knowledge across civilizations took place for the first time in human history. Before this, development of knowledge had taken place. Creation of knowledge had taken place. And the best example of creation of knowledge was Takshashila in India. For 400 years, Takshashila produced outstanding uh, 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 thoughts. It was a Takshashila that Chanakya uh, developed his mind. It was a Takshashila that Charak developed his uh, thinking on medicine. It was a Takshashila that Vishnu Sharma develops uh, literature. For 400 years, Takshashila developed. But it was all indigenous knowledge. It was all Indian knowledge. And similarly, there were centers of uh, learning uh, elsewhere in the world. There was some work done in China and, and elsewhere. But it was the first time that through the efforts of Mamun of the Abbasid Caliphate that you had the bringing together of knowledge from different parts of the world to create a universal knowledge, to create a universal uh, 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 concepts uh, and the cross-fertilization of knowledge. And this is how in the middle of wars, in the middle of conflict, one international think tank, very solidly backed by the state of uh, Abbasid Caliphate, created the, the reality of Vasudeva Kutumbakam through knowledge, uh, um, uh, bringing together this knowledge of over 1,500 years. If they had not done that, we, we would not have known uh, much of the knowledge that was developed in India ourselves, or we would not have known much of the Greek uh, and others. It was all totally lost. I mean, Aristotle today, Aristotle's importance today is all due to the, uh, the Abbasid uh, Caliphate. You would, have never, you would have never heard of him. Now, interestingly, there was a war between the Abbasids of Baghdad and the Umayyads of uh, Damascus. And the Umayyads went to Spain and they settled there. The Abbasids took over the, uh, what is today's Syria, Baghdad, uh, so, so Damascus. Umas, and they, they settled in Spain in Cordoba. And uh, they took over uh, part of Spain and part of uh, Southern Europe. Now, while the Abbasids uh, translated works from Greek and from Sanskrit and from the Chinese into the Arabic, the Umayyads translated the works from Arabic to the Latin. And eventually, then with the European uh, Renaissance and the developments that took place in the Europe in the 14th, 15th century, the work got translated slowly from tra Latin to the uh, Indian language, uh, to, to, the, to, to English. So the algebra that your students are, your children are studying in the, or grandchildren are studying in the uh, schools in Mumbai uh, today, has traveled from its birth in uh, uh, India to uh, Mm, uh, mm, uh, mm, uh, mm, uh, childhood in uh, uh, Arabic to uh, uh, Latin to English. So the civilization that we see today is really a joint venture. It's a collaborative venture. It would be absolutely ridiculous for Americans to say that uh, they have developed science and technology which is capable of taking you to Mars because it has a foundation of last 2,000 years. You can't ignore. If there had been no mathematics, you wouldn't be having any space science. Your entire space science is based on uh, computer science, uh, physics. All these sciences are further based on mathematics. There would be uh, no medicine today uh, had there not been uh, 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 the work done by, done by Avicenna and other people during the Abbasid Empire. So the civilization today is a collaborative effort. Your knowledge, your uh, livelihood, your uh, habits, everything, this microphone, uh, everything today that is produced has come as a result of 2,000 years of collaboration. And and it's only through knowledge, and it's only in the sphere of knowledge that the idea of Vasudeva Kutumbakam has been uh, created. In the area of politics, in the area of resources, you have conflicts. In the area of land management, you have conflicts. In the area of economics, you have conflict. But despite all these conflicts, beginning with the Abbasids up till now, you have a 
you have uh, used the knowledge to really create create the the oneness of the universe or uh, a shared value or shared premise for the advancement of human civilization. And what is happening today? This tradition is continuing. One of the most interesting experiments that's taking place right now as we speak is in producing the fusion nuclear energy. See, the, currently the nuclear energy is fusion by splitting the atom. But the biggest development that will ever take place in nuclear energy is, will be if you can uh, uh, fuse the two atoms, uh, two atoms. That experiment is taking place and it's happening at, uh, in France. And who are the people who are collaborating there in an area which is extremely sensitive? It's nuclear energy. It's not just nuclear energy, but it's the most advanced nuclear energy. And who's working together on this? The Chinese and Indians along with Europeans, Arabs and Israelis. In an area which is the, which is the most security sensitive area, they are working in France. They are, uh, and they are not only working, they are not only just deploying, and this is not the Indian scientists living abroad. These are the Indians in India. These are not PIOs. And these are not Chinese residents of uh, California. These are Chinese in China. That's in China. And if you analyze the budget, uh, which comes out on the 28th of February every year, you would find, if you analyze last year's budget, for instance, you will see in the expenditure line about 100 crores given by the government of India to ITER, this International Thermonuclear Nuclear Experimental Reactor. Uh, I mean, last year it was 100 crores, every year the, uh, the amount changes. So every year the government of India from our taxes is contributing to this uh, experiment. And so it is, it is, so in the most advanced area, you have the collaboration uh, taking place. You would remember that a few years ago, there was this epidemic of SARS. And unlike AIDS, SARS just disappeared. The fear of SARS just disappeared in a matter of few months. At one stage, it looked like SARS would uh, kill millions of people. How did you manage to control SARS? What you could not control, uh, we have not been able to control cancer, we have not been able to find solution to tuberculosis uh, uh, that fast, uh, though tuberculosis is now coming in control. We have not been able to uh, manage so many other diseases. How did we manage SARS, which was a completely new virus? How did you manage to control that in a matter of one year or so? It's because the moment SARS broke out, laboratories in 13 countries worked together. And they worked in a collaborative way. And this is how, within a matter of few months, we could uh, contain SARS. And there were laboratories in India, there were laboratories in US, there were laboratories in, uh, in China again, in Europe, they were working together. So the concept of Vasudeva Kutumbakam, that is of cross-fertilization of uh, universal values, because at the end of the day, what matters is the values. And the knowledge expresses the values. So that is taking place uh, 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 for last 1,500 years. And it's happening even now. It's happening much less than it should happen. That's a different uh, question altogether, but it is happening. You have the Large Hadron Collider in, uh, 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 under Geneva uh, on the border of France and Switzerland. 75 countries are collaborating. There are seven universities in India which are participating in this. And this is not just the TIFR. TIFR, of course, is the leading partner. But even you have the university in Punjab and Haryana uh, and in Madhya Pradesh participating in this, in this research. So you have the humanity has used knowledge to really bring about cross-fertilization of ideas, cross-fertilization of uh, 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 thought processes, uh, cross-fertilization of values through this knowledge. And if you really want to make Vasudeva Kutumbakam or uh, oneness, uh, universal oneness, or uh, the concept of, uh, um, of uh, universe as a family, the word as a family, then you, you need an instrument. And a shared development of knowledge is one in, is, uh, instrument which has been proved over the last 1,500 years, and which is what will help you to uh, go ahead. In recent Indian history, 
one thought leader who understood this very well, and that was Swami Vivekananda. This year there is a 150th birth anniversary of uh, Swami Vivekananda. From last September, I got several invitations to come for uh, uh, 150th uh, uh, anniversary celebrations. I turned all of them down. Because when I asked these organizers who were organizing these events about how much actually they are following Swami Vivekananda's teachings, all that they could tell me was that they are doing some social work. There was nothing more concrete they could provide. And I'm not talking about one or two organizations. I'm talking about a large number of organizations. Now, social work is good. I'm sure Swami Vivekananda would approve of social work. Uh, 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 but uh, that was not core to his message. How many of you have read uh, the Chicago speech? How many of you have read Chicago speech? The text? Yes? So if you read, you will see the, the speech which was given on the inaugural day. The key words that he has used, it's that all religions in the world should follow the principles of universal acceptance and tolerance. These are his precise words. These are not my words. These are the words of Swami Vivekananda. And in fact, he made a, he was speaking in Old English, so he didn't use the word tolerance, he used the word toleration. But I would translate it into the modern English to say toleration to tolerance. Okay. And then again towards the end of the speech, he comes back and he emphasizes that what we need is the universal acceptance and uh, toleration or tolerance. He didn't say Hinduism is more uh, superior to Islam or Islam is more superior to Christianity and all the religions should be in conflict with each other. He said the key to a healthy society, a key to a desired society, is for all religions to understand the principle of universal acceptance and tolerance. That was a key message, but that was only one message that, uh, or one part of the message that Swami Vivekananda gave. There was a second part of the message that Swami Vivekananda gave after he returned to India, from there. And that second message was that philosophy itself is not enough. See, the first message was more or less philosophical. That philosophy must go hand in hand with technology. And which is why the first scientific institution in the country was created by Swami Vivekananda, Swami Vivekananda not, by, uh, not by any uh, scientist. And he got financial assistance from uh, uh, Raja Wadiyar of Mysore and from Jamshedji uh, Tata, the, of the Tata group. So with their financial assistance, he uh, launched uh, a study for the uh, a society for the study of science, uh, study and promotion of science. And from that society came into being the Indian Institute of Science in Bangalore. So Indian Institute of Science in Bangalore is founded by Swami Vivekananda, not by, a, not by a professional scientist. And because Swami Vivekananda belonged to an era when India was not independent and uh, 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 there was no, uh, no politicians uh, running the government, or unfortunately there were foreign rulers running the government. There was no force on him to accommodate somebody's son or daughter as the director. <laughs> and as a result, Swami Vivekananda had a freedom to invite uh, somebody who really deserved and who really knew how to run that institution as the, uh, as, the, as the director, and he chose a person. I, first, initially, there was a, there were a British director just in the setting up stage, and then, initial, then later on, uh, the person who took over the director was Dr. C.V. Raman, who went on to win the Nobel uh, Prize in Physics. So, Swami Vivekananda understood that the way you can bring about progress of a nation uh, the way you can build a nation and the way you can create uh, stability and peace in the world, the linkage uh, between the two, because you cannot live in a nation when, when the, the, uh, peacefully the whole world is unstable and you cannot work for a stable world if your own uh, house is not in order. And the way to do this is to promote the concept of universal tolerance and universal uh, and acceptance of all religions and, and, and uh, secondly to promote the scientific uh, temperament. 
and that the, these two things have to go hand in hand. So in today's world, if you really want to create the concept of Vasudeva Kutumbakam, which has been uh, given to us as a gift by uh, the ancient Rushis and the ancient uh, sages uh, in India, what are the lessons that we can draw from the last 1500 years of history? First of all, one lesson which is clear from the Abbasid experiment, from the message that Swami Vivekananda give, and the message that, uh, and, and, and the experiments which are taking place at ITER and everywhere, that it's only through collaboration that you can progress. There is no alternative to uh, collaboration. There is no alternative to cooperation. And this collaboration, this cooperation has to happen at all levels. Not just collaboration between institutions, collaboration between different constituents of the uh, society, collaboration between different religions. And unless and until an Indian political party comes with an agenda, comes with a program as to how different religions, different castes, different segments of the uh, society, uh, of the Indian society can creatively and constructively work together, we will not realize our full potential. That is absolutely essential.